This is Draw Them All. My name is Elliot, and in an effort to get better at drawing, I'm drawing every Pokemon. If you are interested in following along on that journey, there is a link to the Instagram page down below. In this video series, I share my experiences, my learnings, and sometimes my frustrations. Today, I want to focus on the learning aspect and how effective learning requires consistent practice. If you don't practice something, you'll forget it. There are a lot of things that don't really require muscle memory so much as knowing where certain buttons are. And of course, I'm talking about software. Uh, so much of my digital illustration requires me to use software and some of the techniques and effects that I want to do requires multiple steps and it's really easy to forget one or two of the middle steps when you don't use it enough, when you don't practice it enough. There is a lot I want to learn, but if I don't have time to practice it or if I don't have a project to incorporate it in, then it's almost not worth pursuing. There's this idea of just-in-time learning where just before you need to use a skill or a technique to accomplish something, that is when you learn it. You don't learn it ahead of time. Uh, as a writer, I need to learn a lot of things. Uh, as a technical writer, as a copywriter, there is a lot of information I need to consume before I can actually start working on the piece. And I like to think of that phase of the process as binge learning. Then, of course, once I finish writing the article or the ebook or whatever it is I'm working on, all the information that I consumed so quickly just leaks out of my brain. And uh, it sucks, but that's simply how my brain works. When it comes to software, there is absolutely no guarantee that you'll know how to do something forever. Uh, the UI is always changing, software is always being updated, products are becoming the standard and then becoming obsolete. You never really know what the future holds for all these different tools that we're using and at any point things could change. The thing about digital art is that you're not using a pen or a piece of paper that stays pretty much the same. You're using this weird morphing hammer that uh, helps you create things that simply don't exist. You could be making a 3D jellyfish monster that flies through space and it's moving. It's hard to do that with a pencil and paper, but a pencil and paper never really changes. So if you really want to learn something and you really want it to stick, then it's more than just incorporating a new technique or a new skill into a project. It's how do you incorporate that into your whole routine? How do you incorporate that into your whole process? And that's exactly where I am with the Pokemon project. I want to learn new things, but I also want to find the time to practice the old techniques so that I don't forget about them. How I try to approach it is that I push myself as far as I can go until I reach that plateau, until my work doesn't seem to be getting any better and I need to encounter a new technique that I haven't done before. And if I have the time, I will try to figure it out on my own. I'll play around, I'll experiment with different ways of doing things. Um, if I don't have much time, I try to find a tutorial and that gives me the information I need to just do it quickly. Uh, that's a good example of just-in-time learning. And if I really don't have time at all, I generally try to work around it and I'll make a plan to figure it out next time. When I work around something, I often find happy accidents as well and sometimes that's the most like thrilling moment because I believe that's where style actually comes from. I believe the moment you make your first mistake then it's art. If it's perfect, then how can you really call it art? Because to me, art is hiding the imperfections. That's why when I'm practicing, I'm practicing hiding my mistakes. I like to think about it that way. I, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel like 
there's bound to be mistakes, but it's how I hide them. It's the idea that the better you hide your mistake, the better your art is. And I know it sounds crazy, but that's how I see it. That's why so often when I look at art and I love looking at the weird stuff because as a viewer, I go, wait, is it supposed to look weird? Well, I'm going to keep drawing these Pokemons. If you haven't seen the previous videos from the series, there is a link to the playlist right here. And for more videos about creativity, check out these ones.